Lady Margaret is the queen of the Gluckons and the supreme leader of the Magog Cartel. Being the queen of a super species, much like with queen bees in bee societies of the real world, her primary purpose is to give birth to the Glucken race in order to keep her economic empire full of CEOs and workers to run her businesses and generate profits. As she is yet to be seen in an Oddworld game, there are many different depictions of the Glucken matriarch through concept art and from what's been said about her, both in terms of what she looks like and also in terms of what position she plays within the Magog cartel. Aesthetically, she's gone through many different designs, including this one which I used to think was of the Slig Queen Skillia due to her not really looking that mean with those big round eyes. And of course, what looks like those tentacles hanging down, but no, that's meant to be the Glucken Queen. Then there's this version of her where she looks like one of the fiery creatures from Labyrinth. But those are both pretty out there, unusual portrayals of her, and it does seem to have developed a more standard depiction of Lady Margaret. While she's shown to be bigger than your typical Glucken, as you'd expect considering her body's designed simply to produce Glucken eggs, her size varies from picture to picture. Often, Queen Maggie is portrayed as being so huge, she has to be carried around on a sedan throne by a species known as the Kinto Slaves, that literally have evolved for this purpose. They're basically massive muscle monsters, only possessing a strong muscly torso and arms. And that's it. They were inspired by the idea of bodybuilders working on only one part of their body, ending up with, as you'd expect, one part of their body being immensely strong and looking rather disproportionate as a result of this. The Kintos didn't always used to literally carry the wealthy on their backs, instead living in their natural habitat of mountains due to hating having anything above them, where their strength came in handy as they were able to climb up mountains with their muscular arms, penetrating holes and cracks in any hard rocky surface. Eventually, they were discovered and enslaved by the Gluckens who, being pragmatic, used the Kinto's strength to their advantage. The Kinto's strength literally being the Kinto's actual strength. Over a long time of servitude, they've mutated and ended up as being mindless tools of manual labour, where they're used by the Gluckens to carry massive heavy loads, just like your mum and Moloch. In these portrayals of Lady Margaret, she is shown to be quite an intimidating figure, while also being somewhat sophisticated despite her large size, having her lips penciled in red and her face powdered white. Her general look possibly being inspired by depictions of historical figures such as Queen Elizabeth I. I've also always wondered if Lady Margaret was named after Margaret Thatcher, what with both being female leaders, and considering Thatcher had such a massive impact being the Prime Minister of Britain throughout the entire of the 80s and going into the 90s, it makes sense to me that considering only a couple of years later Oddworld started being developed, plus her economic policies when she was in power have developed quite a reputation, which to sum up best how her policies are viewed by many people even to this day, the day I wrote this, I coincidentally randomly went on a meme website, and a top rising meme at that time happened to be this one with a picture of her that proclaimed, Reverse Robin Hood, where you take from the poor and give to the rich. So that kind of reputation sort of reminds me a bit of, you know, the Nogog cartel, so potentially this may have inspired Lady Margaret to some degree, even if just by name. Also, Thatcher's hair kind of reminds me of the shape of the Glucken Matriarch's head, although so does Queen Elizabeth I's hair, so, you know, it just sort of resembles that to me. In other concept art, however, Lady Margaret has been displayed as being an absolutely gargantuan gluck, towering over the minions that she commands, being so heavy she's required to be moved around with a giant metal arm, which I'm sure the Kinto slaves are very grateful for. Queen Margaret is known to be incredibly cold, cruel and heartless, even when it comes to her own children, but this is purely down to business, and Glockens, most of whom love and are fiercely loyal to their mother and want to make her proud, can win favour with her by being good business glucks and generating a good profit for her and the cartel. Fail her, however, and the consequences are sure to be dire. If you're a Glockon and you're summoned to see your mother, you're either incredibly lucky as it means you're a member of her inner circle, or it means you're unfortunately unlucky because you're probably done screwed up and are about to face her wrath. A perfect example of this is Malk the Glockon, who was once supposedly her favourite son successfully running businesses like Rupture Farms and Soulstorm Brewery, and yet she's after his head when he loses those businesses and is blamed for failing to subdue the Mudokan uprisings that destroyed them, which caused economic turmoil. Even if he isn't truly to blame, Queen Maggie has investors to answer to as well, and needs to hold someone accountable to maintain her position and her power. It might have been better had he cooked in the fire. 
Possibly the most famous picture of Lady Margaret supposedly depicts the trial of Marduk the Glockung and shows the Queen in all her impressive majestic glory down in the pits of her chamber. Considering Mullock is there to be judged probably unfairly and punished accordingly, I absolutely love the way her chamber where this trial is being held just looks like the depths of hell. It really is invoking evilness from just the setting of the area and shows her as this massive monster. It's a shame that our introduction to the Gluckens matriarch in the games via this trial was yet another one of the elements that was cut from Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Despite this, as I just said, the Vikers phone her up in the bad ending of Munch's Odyssey, where her voice can be heard. <laughs> the voice of the Grand Ruler of the Magog Cartel, everyone. I'm joking, that's just, you know, phone talk representation, of course. Indeed, the Vikers phone her up to arrange a transplant operation, a background story element that plays out in small articles of the Daily Deception newspaper seen throughout the game. Never the main headline, it's a nice little way Oddworld inhabitants snuck in a secondary storyline to build up to a bad ending without it interfering too much in the main storyline. The newspapers build up, first reporting that Lady Margaret develops a cough before needing to have a lung transplant and offering an increasing amount of moolah to anyone that's able to get her the gabbit lungs she needs in order to survive. The question is, of course, what does Lady Margaret come down with? Now, I don't believe she has the Glucken disease Gorman Desenza like her great-grandmother who's been cryogenically frozen. If that disease could be sorted with a simple gabbit lung transplant, there'd be no point in her being frozen in the first place. Instead, from what I understand, Lady Margaret has lung cancer due to constantly smoking. She's so dedicated to this pastime that I've seen concept art where she has two lit cigarettes in one hand and her fingers stained yellow from the tobacco. There's even one which shows her with a vent installed into her throat so she can inhale the tobacco directly into her lungs. In the good ending of Munch's Odyssey, she's placed on life support after failing to get the lungs, what of Munch being the last Gabby how an escaped biker's dabs with the last can of Gabbiar. But of course, in the bad ending, Erwin and Humphrey get a hold of Munch once more, except this time they do what Erwin had intended first time around and harvest the Gabbit's lungs to sell for a fortune, ringing up Maggie to arrange for transplant as soon as possible. Perhaps an idea for a somehow even darker version of the bad ending. Concept art shows this process as not being done exactly as you'd expect, depicting a rather disturbing scene of Munch literally being transfused onto Lady Margaret by the lungs, as opposed to having the lungs cut out of him and transferred over. This is a prime example showing the gruesome aspects of Lady Margaret, being designed to be disgusting and likely gross people out. In order to forget how ugly she is both in terms of looks and manner, she likes to be surrounded by fine art. Being a mother of the Gluckens, her primary purpose is simply that. She gives birth and ensures the continued reproduction of the Glucken race. She watches and oversees the birth of each of her children as it is so vital to her role. She needs to continue to lay eggs, otherwise the Gluckens will die out and the Magog cartel will lose the place it holds in society. I really like this idea of the queens on Oddworld being sort of like a mix of the natural aspect of queens in the real world, like bees, as well as a societal type of queen, as in the monarchies seen in nations throughout history. Likewise, the way the Daily Deception reported as soon as Queen Maggie developed a hacking cough reminds me of the way the news in the real world will report on members of the royal family with immense scrutiny and on their health, and shows how important the Glocken royalty is in Oddworld society. Even though Lady Margaret is the head of the Magog Cartel, as well as being immensely respected and highly regarded among most Gluckens, there are Gluckens who do have more power than her, and if her fertility dries up, meaning she is unable to fulfil her purpose anymore, society will turn on her. It's a common misconception that queen bees in the real world are in control of their hives, when in reality the worker bees control the queen and are able and willing to kill and replace her at any point they wish. I think this is a fantastic analogy for Queen Margaret, a character who's commonly thought of both out of and in-universe as being the head, the top one, most powerful of her organisation, when in reality she's immensely disposable and will be gotten rid of as soon as her usefulness is diminished. To take that analogy in terms of the societal idea of the Queen in the real world is a bit like how Queen Elizabeth II officially is in charge of Britain, but in reality she holds very little practical power and is just 
the figurehead and representation of the country. Lady Margaret is likewise immensely respected, but ultimately has to make out that she's immensely powerful, even though she might not hold as much power as she'd like people to believe. Just as Queen Elizabeth is under threats from the Prime Minister and the Ministers of Parliament, who could in theory remove her from that position if they so wished. In which case, I like to imagine a civil war would erupt, and the Queen would raise an army, and fight against the forces of the Prime Minister, and it'd be totally epic. But anyway, the Glucklands are higher up, and in reality more powerful than Lady Margaret, such as investors, other people that put her in that position and view her as just a representation of a Magog cartel, a tool to be used for their own purposes, for as long as she's useful to them and could remove her anytime they wish. Just like the worker bees, they will turn on her whenever they see fit and will prepare a replacement. This is shown further through examples such as the way it's generally deemed that Mark is guilty of his crimes and the trial he faces by Lady Margaret is therefore essentially just a show trial. His fate is likely already sealed, judging by the industrialist news broadcasters. To me it makes a lot of sense for Queen Maggie to not be as powerful as initially assumed. Considering had the original plans gone ahead, we would have met her in the second part of the five-part Oddworld Quintology. To meet the big bad of a franchise so early on would be quite surprising and considering a theme of Oddworld is that there's always someone more higher up than who you think is the most powerful person. It makes sense that in the first game we think Mark is the worst, then for Lady Margaret to come in part 2 before seeing who knows who in the third part, maybe her great grandmother, which begs the question who would come after her. It makes sense for Lady Margaret to be presented as being all powerful, but although she does have a ton of power, there's always someone else waiting in the shadows. Perhaps to show how powerful and important she is, concept art shows Queen Margaret with what looks to me to be Glocktigai, the members of the Yoktigai family that Mr. Septo uses as security in Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. Just as the Glucklands use Sligs and the Vikers use Interns, Lady Margaret likewise uses Glocktigai as her personal guard, which makes sense to me considering the Glocktigai are on a whole other level to Sligs and Interns and are easily the most superior security force that's been seen in the entirety of the Oddworld games. The fact that they're from the same family as the Glucklands I would suggest supports this idea further. It just makes sense that the Queen Glucklan would be guarded by the elite security branch of the Octigai family. Carrying on with the bee theme, it's interesting to note that it's apparently hinted that there are more Glocken Queens with different ideologies and factions to the Magog Cartel, just as each hive of bees is separate with their own queen. Even within beehives, there is a type of queen bee known as the Virgin Queens, who emerge from their cells and find other Virgin Queens to fight to the death, until there's only one left, who will replace the old queen when she eventually dies. In cut early footage of Oddward Munch's Odyssey, the newscaster Slig refers to her as The Uguayas de Queen Gluck herself, Lady Margaret. Now I personally always heard him say Uguaya State, suggesting he's naming a place, a state, within the Magog cartel. But I remember years ago seeing that there was actually some debate to what he says here with some thinking it's Uguay Estate which is quite interesting, suggesting that he's referring to the estate that Lady Margaret represents. After thinking about it more, I remember coming to the conclusion, although I can't quite remember how, they probably did say Yugwe Estate. That lone disgruntled janitor continues to cripple factories of the Yugwe Estate and the Magog Cartel. But who knows? I think it's just a bit of a coincidence that Yugwe Estate sounds so much like Yugwe Estate, that I think it's just probably likely that he says Yugwe Estate, I guess. The fact that a newscaster is so specific in this clip by saying the Yugwe Estate Queen Glucker herself suggests further the idea of there being multiple Queen Gluckens, I guess each one representing either their own estates or their own political or geographical area, their states. Just as there's been so many different depictions of Lady Margaret herself, there have also been multiple ideas about where she lives. It has been said that all Gluckens are born to her in the Magog Cartel capital city Nolibab, or Nolibab, however you want to pronounce it. This apparently occurs in a place known as the Hall of Larvae. However, perhaps more extensively, she's been depicted as living on her personal blimp, a massive airship that is specifically built to house her and be the perfect home for Lady Margaret. 
Being the Queen Glocken, she only lives in the most august accommodations and her airship was designed to be impressively majestic, as well as being ideal due to having the ability to transport her around Oddworld easily. Do not underestimate the size of this blimp. It is massive, with tons of rooms inside, including apparently a garden with a glass dome. Every room has been designed to suit Lady Margaret's needs, with her personal quarters apparently being at the top of the balloon with the intention of getting as far away from the ground as possible. And when I read that, I found that really interesting, as it's generally considered, from what I understand, in Glocken culture, to be a status symbol to be as far underground as you can. For example, the Glocken capital, Nolibab, is embedded under many levels of Oddworld's surface, within a crater. It's a bit like in the real world, how living high up in a skyscraper is considered a high state of symbol. Except, living up to its name, on Oddworld, it's the opposite. The further down you are, the better it's considered. So it makes me curious that Lady Margaret wishes to be as high up from the ground as she can. Perhaps it is a representation of the idea that she doesn't actually have as much power as she makes out, and is there to be seen as a representation of the Magog Cartel. Or perhaps she chooses to be so high up, because she wants to stay as far away from possible, from the jaws of those that are more powerful than her in the depth of Nolobab, a safety measure. Just look at Moloch and his supposed junk heap of a blimp. Imagine Maggie going rogue on this massive state-of-the-art airship. That being said, of course, this idea of status hasn't exactly been shown in the games, and even if it had, it seems that it may have been retconned within the new Oddworld canon, or may either be just simply another status symbol along with airships, judging by the conversations between Moloch and the pilot Slick in Oddworld Soulstorm, indicating that airships are themselves high status symbols and that the rich often retire on luxury models. So it makes sense that Lady Margaret would have her own and that it would be considered very high status. The vessel contains many long hallways, delineating the sense of grandeur as they lead up to her chamber, which in some concept art, the doors to which are meant to resemble a sphincter. Lady Margaret is one of the most fascinating characters that has yet to be seen in an Oddworld game. She is a key example of the idea in Oddworld that there is always someone higher up on the food chain, and I hope that eventually we get to meet her and see this fully play out in future Oddworld games and media to truly find out the actual role within the Magog Cartel of the Queen Glocken, Lady Margaret. Hello, follow me. Mm-hmm. <laughs>